You are welcome to this brief introduction to the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 27 through 42. We are the 30th day of January, 2022. I'm Dr. Galen Curra. Let's get into it. We are still in the second of seven major movements within the book. The Apostles witness in Jerusalem and Judea as the churches of Jerusalem begin to expand, first by the Apostles witness, in today's lesson, before the High Priest. In the preceding context, we read how Jewish religious authorities had forbid Jesus' apostles to speak publicly about Jesus, yet the apostles were going to temple every day, teaching about Jesus, healing many sick folk. The authorities had them arrested again, putting them in jail overnight, from which they escaped and returned to teach at temple. So the temple police arrested them again. In the following texts, words in green brackets represent variant readings from some ancient manuscripts. We read from verse 27. When they had brought them, the apostles, they had them stand before the council, or the Sanhedrin. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood upon us. Now, the council, or Sanhedrin, was a Jerusalem-based assembly or court of 23 or 71 elders, similar to a Western parliament plus a Supreme Court plus a College of Cardinals. There was no higher authority in the land aside from the Roman imperial authorities who had limited the powers of the Sanhedrin. The high priest was the only priest allowed to enter the most holy place in the temple. His respect was similar to that of an ayatollah in some branches of Islam or of a pope in Catholicism. Roman imperial authorities approved the Jewish high priest and local kings feared him. When he spoke of Jesus, he only referred to this name or that man. It seems that these authorities would not deign to speak the name of Yeshua, or Jesus, whom they had pressured the Romans to crucify. When they accused the apostles of filling the city with their teaching, they had only been doing as Jesus commanded in Matthew 28, when he said, Go, make disciples by teaching to obey all that I commanded you. Thus Peter and the rest of the apostles who were with him this time answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. If you lead Bible discussion groups, then you might choose to pose queries such as the following. Wait, are we not saved by faith alone? Why did the apostles say, we must obey God? Is that not salvation by works? Is that not some form of legalism? Well, here's a hint. If this context is presenting a contrast and is not a salvation text, it's a matter of whom we obey. Another query, wait, does not the Bible say to obey human authorities, kings, governors, and church elders? Why not obey these Jewish authorities? Well, here's a hint. We always obey the higher authority, and when we are abused, we appeal to a higher authority. Uh, wait, was it a tree 
a stake or a cross upon which Jesus was crucified? Well, here's a hint. It was a stake made of a tree to which a crossbar was attached. Now, the text says, God has raised up this Jesus. Now, there are two possible meanings of raised up. Does that mean God made him public? Or does this mean he raised him from death to life? Now, here's a hint. Both ideas are true. But which one better fits the context? That is, the verse in which it occurs. Oh, another query. In what way is the Holy Spirit a witness to Jesus' death and resurrection? As a hint, you might ask, what was the Spirit doing then, aside from the inner witness that he gives to Christian believers? When the Apostle said, God has given the Holy Spirit to those who obey him, there is an interesting facet of Greek grammar. The phrase, God has given, is a Greek aorist tense, which is timeless in a subordinate clause, and so can quite legitimately be translated as a kind of general truth or principle. God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. So, for discussion, you might ask, what is something that you and I can do in order to get more of the Holy Spirit? As a hint, read again verse 32. When they, the council members, heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them, the apostles. But a Pharisee of the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the men to be put aside for a short time. Then he said to them, Fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. You might mention that the Apostle Paul had been a student of Gamaliel and never spoke against him. So here's a query to pose or a question to discuss. What might have motivated Gamaliel to defend the apostles? As a hint, consider this. Gamaliel understood the apostles' message. Where had he heard it? What did he think of it? He also knew the law, the Torah. He knew what justice is. He also knew how the Romans suppress rebels. And he will leverage that fact in a moment. And he knew the members of the Sanhedrin, what motivated them, and he understood human nature. So he continued in verse 36, For some time ago, Thoidas rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. But he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and disappeared. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up at the time of the census and got people to follow him. He also perished, and all who followed him were scattered. Now note, Thoidas and Judas were both common names, and there were other rebels with the same names. Therefore, this Thoidas is not the one who was named by the Jewish historian Josephus, as some scoffers claim. So, he continues, In the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone, because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, then you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. Here's a query. Why would a respected, intelligent man, such as Gamaliel, even consider that the Apostle's message could possibly be from God? Well, here's a hint. He knew the Hebrew Scriptures better than most other members of the Sanhedrin. He also knew what the Apostles were teaching, 
and he perhaps found no contradiction. Well, the other members of the council were convinced by him, and when they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As the apostles left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. Some manuscripts add the name of Jesus. To flog, literally to skin, is to beat with fists or to whip with leathern strips in ways that inflict pain and leave skin lesions, scars. Now, what had the apostles done that merited to be flogged? Hint. For sure, they had disobeyed the Sanhedrin's earlier order not to speak about Jesus in public. Now, you might ask for discussion, what is it that all atheists and false religions want Christians to stop doing? Well, here's a hint. This has nothing to do with Christians feeding the poor or with shuffling your feet as worship teams try to lead us in non-melodious commercial songs. Why would Luke write in verse 41, the name, that is to suffer for the name, and not write the name of Jesus, or for the sake of the Lord. As a hint, what did the phrase the name mean to Jews at that period of history? And finally, verse 42. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. So in your study groups, you might discuss practical ways in which to fill a city with the apostles' teaching, aside from weekly services that the city does not attend, now that we cannot perform healing on demand. Of course, we would like to underscore that they went every day to where Jews were assembling and willing to listen, and they continued teaching in their homes every day, or at least every day in one home or another. They did not cease to teach and to proclaim Jesus as the promised Messiah. Thank you to, we would like you and your fellow believers to discuss very carefully the places, the times where you can bring together believers and seekers who are willing to learn the Apostles' Doctrine and to study through the book of Acts with them and any other portions of Scripture that the Holy Spirit will bring to your attention.